All right, well, we're trying to get online here. And as I promised, I'm doing uh, some weekly stuff that a lot of people have been asking me about, but I've just been too busy to answer. So I figured it'd be easier if I just kind of get on video every now and then and give you my perspective of some things. Um, so today I want to talk about is partnerships. Uh, I get a lot of people, they tell me they're in areas that they're trying to buy properties and they can't buy properties because it doesn't make sense financially. And so they're having a hard time getting deals. So they kind of come up with an idea that maybe they can partner with friends or family. So let me just say that partnerships can be great and they can suck. And it can be the same partnership, right? Depending on how you set up the partnership. So I'm curious that anyone watching, if you have been in a partnership at some point um, and how it went, did it finish good or did it finish bad? Because I don't, I don't care any kind of partnership, any kind of business, it doesn't matter if it's real estate or not. One of the biggest challenges is you get two people that don't know what they're doing and they think that together, zero plus zero somehow will equal five. It doesn't work that way. If you don't know what you're doing and this person doesn't know what they're doing, the odds of you guys magically understanding what you're doing together is slim to none and you're setting yourself up for failure in the partnership. So my suggestion when you're doing a partnership is first of all, sit down and make sure you have a very, very clear understanding of what is the goal, what's the expected outcome of the partnership. So what is it that you expect and what is it that the other person expects? So that's the first challenge is nobody actually talks about a defined end moment of the partnership. They just think it's going to be magical that they're going to be dancing over a rainbow every day, riding unicorns, and that it's going to be this magical fairy tale. And the reality is, is that may work for a day or two days or a month or three months, and then you got to start putting in work. So making sure that you have the right expected outcome is the first challenge in a partnership. The next challenge in a partnership is understanding who is doing what. So a partnership is a business arrangement. You may not think it is, and that's why you know most partnerships end in lawsuit or disillusion. So you wanna make sure that whatever you're doing in this partnership, that you know exactly what you're doing, what is your role, and what is your responsibility. So it is a good idea to have an organization chart, or they call them org charts, in your partnership agreement that says exactly what is your role, what is your responsibility, so if you were to take a business, I don't care if it's owning a piece of real estate or a plumbing company or gym or whatever, you have marketing, then you have sales, then you have operations, and then you have accounting. So you have IT and finance, but we won't worry about that. Um, I'm sorry, IT and tech support uh, and HR. But let's just take the four, right? So you've got, uh, you've got marketing, you've got sales, then you have operations, and then you have accounting. So you've got to ask yourself, in this partnership, what are you doing? And then more importantly, what is the other person doing? And are there any gaps in the partnership? Meaning, who, where are the missing points? Because you may both be people that love marketing and love sales, and that's great until you have to figure out who's doing the operations. And the last thing you want to do is figure this out after you guys have already signed the agreements, you have money in the deal, you're doing something, and then you don't understand who is the operator. So. Always make sure that you're very, very clear on who is doing what in the partnership, okay? So the roles and responsibilities are important. The next thing is I would say you've got to make sure you understand what is the expected jobs that you're doing and what time frame are you expecting to do it? Meaning, so you are going to spend an hour, two hours, three hours, five hours. How long are you going to spend doing this and what do they think you're going to spend? You may go into this partnership thinking, I'm only gonna do an hour a week. And they may be thinking, this person's gonna be running the whole thing. So all of a sudden you start kind of going down this road and all of a sudden you go, wait a second, I thought you were gonna be spending all your time. And they're gonna go, no, I got a full-time job. I'm not doing that shit, you do it. And all of a sudden now it's like, oh, I thought this or I thought that or my interpretation was. So make sure you understand what time commitment everyone is doing. The next thing you gotta understand is you've gotta ask yourself, what is, um, not just time commitment, but what is the expected exit strategy of the partnership? Is this a one deal partnership? Are you gonna be doing this for multiple deals? Like how long is this partnership going, right? So a lot of times people think like, oh, I'm in this partnership and this is gonna be great. And all of a sudden, you know, two years later, you're going, wait a second, I needed you for the money then, I don't need you for the money now, and I don't wanna do all this work. Well, 
you joined the partnership based on what you told that person you needed from them. You wanted them to cut a check and you were going to do all the work. And maybe for your first deal, you were okay doing that. But after your second, third, fourth deal, now you're thinking, okay, I don't need as much. So I don't want you. I want more help because I've got five other deals, 10 other deals going. The problem is, is that's not the deal that they signed up on. They signed up on a deal that you were going to do all the work. And now you're upset about the deal that you did. My advice, if you're not sure and you're brand new, do like a JV on one deal. Let's do this deal. Let's see how it goes. Then we can revise it. We can revamp it. And we can decide if we're going to continue going down this path on deal number two. We're going to change roles. We're going to change financial commitments. Because every time you do a deal, you're going to learn something about yourself. You're going to learn something about the other person. And you're going to learn about the real, the deal that you're doing, whatever business it is, if it's real estate or whatever, you're going to learn about that person. And they may be someone that you don't want to be doing business with. You may not like their ethical standards. You may not like their work ethic. You may not like anything, their standardization to them. Good, maybe just okay. And you want great as far as uh, product to finish. So you got to make sure you take it one at a time. One of the next biggest challenges is, um, if they have a spouse or significant other, so a big challenge that a lot of people don't understand when they're dealing in a partnership is if that person's married or gets married or gets divorced or has some life change, how does that affect the partnership? So I'll give you an example. I, I had a, a guy that I was coaching one time and his partnership just, I mean, it was got, it got very ugly and it got personal because they were friends. So one of the reasons you want to have these conversations before, let me just say is if you are friends with these people and you want to keep your friendship, this is why you have the conversation before it happens. I have so many people like, oh, that's my cousin. That's my best friend. We'll never get in an argument. That's why you have the conversation before. Because if you can't have the discussion when you're calm and everything's going good, how do you think it's going to be when you have a cash call and you need ten, twenty, fifty thousand $50,000 and you're going, I need the money. And they're going to go, I don't have the money. So... And we're, I'm going somewhere with this story, but you always want to make sure you have a contingency fund, maybe sitting in an escrow account or a savings account that you're always going to have set aside for the what ifs, right? And you always want, you never want to have to go into your pocket if it's possible. So I always say, if you're in a partnership, how much are you guys setting aside for what ifs for a contingency? If this person is the money person, they need to cut a check and submit it in there. Now, you may have to have some rules of the operating agreement that state that they can't pull the money out unless you have both signatures or something like that. But you want to make sure that the money is there because the last thing you want to do is figure out where is the money and how do you get the money in the heat of battle when you actually need it that day, right? So anyway, so I had these uh, business uh, clients that I was coaching and uh, they had a cash call. He needed money and he's like, I need $10,000. We had a roof issue, whatever it was. And the guy was like, I don't, I, I can't do it. I can't, I can't put the money in. Um, you know, I just got married. I got this, I got that. And so now you got a problem, right? Do you divest some of their interest of ownership in the deal? Or do you tack that on to the backside? You put the money in now. You weren't supposed to be the money person. Now you have to be. And maybe you get your money back plus interest. But it causes uncomfortable situations. Well, in this situation, the guy said, I, I can't put the money in. Two weeks later, he has a meeting with the guy and the guy drives up in a brand new car. And he's like, are you fucking kidding me? He's like, are you kidding me? I thought you didn't have the money. He said, I didn't say I didn't have the money. I said, I can't put the money in. My wife doesn't want me put, my new wife doesn't want me putting in any more money into the real estate deals. So again, the expectation, it wasn't him, it was the spouse. So one of the things that I recommend is if you have a partnership, I recommend that you have what's called a business, uh, a board of directors meeting. Okay. So I suggest once a month, maybe once a quarter, um, which depends on the speed of your business and what you're doing. You need to have a board of directors meeting where you and the partner meet, but then any spouses or anyone who has any influence in their decision making is in the meeting also. And that is where you go over big conversations of goals. Where are we at? Are we on track or off track with our quarterly goals, yearly goals? Are we, you know, where are we at on budget? Are we on budget? Are we off budget? Where, what's the strategy? What is any issues that anyone has? This is where we air them. So if a spouse or significant other or child or somebody has an issue with what's going on, this is where you have the conversation. So you don't want it to come from the spouse through them to you. 
that's not a good way to communicate and that's not a good way to the partnership and it's not fair to the partner. But you want to make sure that if there is an issue, that you definitely have the conversation before it becomes a bigger problem. Because all of these things are ways to avoid bigger issues. The other thing you want to talk about when you have a partnership is what happens if, you know, what happens if we have to divorce as partners? What happens if we dissolve this partnership? Who gets what? Nobody likes to talk about that in the beginning. Everyone thinks it's going to be fancy, rosy, ro rainbows, and Skittles. But that's not reality. The reality is, is you're going to have hard times. You're going to have issues. And you want to make sure that you can have the conversation before of how do we dissolve this business and still keep our friendship. So a lot of people don't want to have the conversation because they say, oh, it'll mess up our friendship. I guarantee you, if you don't do it, it will mess up your friendship. You've got to have this conversation before to keep the friendship, relationship, whatever it is. And if you can't have this logical question answer right now, again, how's it going to be when you're emotionally charged, you're in the heat of battle, and now you're trying to figure out the answer? Because that's what a lot of people do. They don't understand that they are avoiding the, the, the challenges. See, a lot of times my recommendation as well, especially when you have the spouses involved, is talk about what could go right, right? Because that's what we do. We always want to sell someone on the best case scenario. We could make $500,000, but what's worst case scenario? Well, in real estate, we could get sued and lose everything. That is worst case scenario, right? That's worst case scenario. I think we're going to be somewhere in between. I think we're going to be about $225,000. So you tell people what is the best case, what is worst case, and what is a realistic answer of where you're going to be? Because what happens is, is if you tell them all best case scenario and everyone's thinking, oh, this is pie in the sky, this is going to be great, and that doesn't happen, that's the first chink in the armor where they doubt that you're actually going to be able to be successful because you oversold it. How do I know this? Because I did this many times and it's very hard to backtrack what you sold because, as you know, whatever the numbers are, the numbers are. And normally, right, we shoot for the stars, you know, we hang at the moon, whatever the term is. But you don't want to sell that to someone that you're trying to convince because if it doesn't happen, that's when you're going to start losing faith and you don't want to do that. So again, partnerships are great and they suck at the same time. You know, I know people that have had a lot of partners and they said, you know what, one bad interpretation ruins everything. So if you have multiple partners, you have to be very, very clear. Do not oversell right? Make sure you're realistic with what you're doing, but more importantly, make sure that whatever you're doing, you have it clear guided and it's steps and there's actionable items that have to be done. And you're very, very clear with what you expect the outcome to be, because that is the biggest challenge and make sure you know, what is your role? What are you doing in the business and what are they doing in the business? And is there any weaknesses? If you guys are both visionaries, you need an operator because you guys will collapse. If you guys are both operators, you'll never even sell anything and you'll be sitting there staring at each other with a bunch of spreadsheets. So you have to have both. And if your disc profile, I recommend doing disc profile, that's how I learned. Um, but if you're doing this and you don't know what the other person's disc is, you don't know what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, you're gonna have a challenge. One thing I tell people to do is, if you have a partner, you sit down with your partner and you write down what do you think their strengths are and then on the other line, what do you think their weaknesses are? And have them do the same thing about you. And I bet you, you'll be surprised at what they think you're strong at and what they think you're weak at and vice versa. And hopefully you guys complement each other or three people or whatever, so that when you're doing this, you're very, very clear in the outcome of what's gonna happen and you're setting yourself up for success. Just saying, hey, I have no money, um, you have experience, let's kind of do this together that's not, a, that's not a recipe, right? And again, and if you're gonna do something like that where you're doing all the sweat equity in the beginning because you wanna learn, I recommend doing it one deal at a time because if you do it more than one deal at a time, you're gonna start resenting the fact that you negotiated a bad deal because at the time you needed money, but now maybe you don't. So you gotta make sure that you understand that. So that's my pontification for today. If you guys want, you can follow me or, you know, track my videos and all that crap. But anyways, just want to help you guys out with partnerships. Partnerships are great and they suck at the same time. So I hope this helped you guys out. Everybody have a great, what are we on Tuesday? And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.